Hi, everybody. This is Peter Schiff. This is Monday, April 27th, 2009. And I am blogging today from my hotel room in Orlando, Florida. I just flew down here today. I am speaking at the National CFA Conference. And I couldn't resist, uh, after reading a story about some Fed economists who came out uh, with a recommendation or a paper that, in their opinion, the ideal interest rate for the U.S. economy is negative 5%. Now, I mean, this whole thing is ridiculous for many, many reasons. But the fact that the Fed would even employ economists capable of coming up with such a foolish analysis is, is reason enough to abolish the entire organization. But I mean, let's think about this for a minute. First of all, the ideal interest rate is negative 5%. I mean, ideal for who? It's certainly not ideal for the lenders. Why would anybody want to lend at negative 5%? I mean, it's kind of like, ideally, I would be dating a supermodel, Michelle Bunchen. I mean, you can obviously see why that would be an ideal situation for me. The problem is going to be selling it to Michelle. It might not be ideal for her. You know, this whole idea that low interest rates are ideal. I mean, first of all, what about wages? I mean, isn't the ideal... Uh, minimum wage, how about a million dollars? Isn't that great for the people? Doesn't everybody want to earn a million dollars? Sure, but the problem is nobody wants to pay it. Same thing with rents. You know, from a tenant's perspective, the ideal rent is low, but from the landlord, the ideal rent is high. So it's nonsense to say, ideally, we should have a five per, negative 5% interest rates. The whole concept is absurd. What we need in the United States is higher interest rates because we need more savings. We need to encourage people to save. We need to increase the return on, on, on savings so that we can have more loans to finance capital formation. So we need higher interest rates. Now, sure, it would be nice if we can have low interest rates, but in order to get low interest rates, you have to have an abundance of savings. You have to have a lot of savings relative to the demand. That's how you get low interest rates. Again, you know, I've used this analogy before. You know, a kid can tell his father, my ideal grade is an A+. Plus. Yeah, of course, it's everybody's ideal grade. But if you don't study, your actual grade is going to be an F. And just because, you know, ideally you'd get an A, idealism has no meaning in the whole concept if you're not studying. So, sure, ideally we'd have low interest rates. But, of course, we can't possibly have negative interest rates. And, of course, the Fed acknowledges that, that the negative interest rates can't be negative. After all, the Fed can't pay us to borrow money. That'd be insane. Uh, but what they want to do, these economists think that the Fed should try to bring about conditions that approximate a negative 5% interest rate. Well, how can the Fed do that? I mean, there's only one way to do that, and that's create a lot of inflation. And if they create a lot of inflation and somebody borrows money, when they pay it back, they're paying it back in cheaper dollars. So that is the equivalent of a negative interest rate. The problem is nobody is going to lend. I mean, people aren't stupid. If the Federal Reserve is going to create a lot of inflation, lenders are simply going to demand higher interest rates to compensate. So if the Fed wants lower interest rates and it's going to create inflation to try to bring that about, it's going to achieve the opposite. Interest rates are actually going to go up because there's going to be a bigger inflation premium. Now, of course, if what the Fed is saying is we understand that the private sector won't lend at a negative interest rate environment, we don't care. The Federal Reserve will simply print enough money and loan it out at 0% where the borrower knows that they're actually going to make money by borrowing it because of how high the inflation is. They can borrow from the Fed and then pay the Fed back with inflated dollars. What the Federal Reserve does is destroy all private sector lending. It destroys all private sector savings and says we're going to replace legitimate savings and legitimate credit with our printing press. We're just going to print a bunch of money and dole it out and let everybody spend it. And if they think that is going to create economic growth, we are in serious, serious trouble. All that's going to do is create hyperinflation. And you know, also the mere fact that our economists at the Fed can come to the conclusion that the ideal rate of interest for our economy is negative 5%, that ought to tell them that there's something terribly wrong with our economy. I mean, our economy has got to be a complete mess if it needs negative 5% interest rates to sustain itself. What that should tell the Fed is this economy is seriously screwed up.
And the reason it's so screwed up is because of this type of thinking. It's because we've had a Federal Reserve that doesn't understand basic uh, economics. It doesn't understand where wealth comes from, where, how savings are created, how credit is created, how economies grow, how living standards rise. They simply think all they have to do is print money. Unfortunately, I think we're about to relearn a very painful lesson from, from history. Anyway, uh, you know, en enough, uh, enough about the Fed. Uh, I want to mention also, you know, the markets uh, were down a little bit today. The dollar uh, caught a bid based on, I think, the, the fears of an economic slowdown being enhanced by this outbreak of swine flu. And, you know, this to me seems reminiscent of, you know, bird flu or SARS or other scares where there was going to be some kind of global pandemic that was going to derail the global economy. Most likely, this is going to be another one of those situations, but I still don't understand how the dollar continuously gets a flight to quality based on any of these problems. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense to me, but it still is happening. But I still think that the technical damage done to the dollar last week uh, potentially looks like it should control the short-term direction. So my guess would be today's rally in the dollar I should be short-lived, and I think the dollar will will continue lower. Anyway, you know it's going to be interesting to see if anybody else comments on this negative five percent uh, rate of interest. You know, it's, it also kind of follows up on that article uh, that appeared as an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, arguing uh, for the Fed to create inflation uh, by Mencken, the the Harvard economist. Actually, the uh, New York Times did run my answer. Uh, to his op-ed in the Sunday business section, and I've posted it up on, on, uh, on the Europac website. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. I'll try to blog again soon. Take care.